Hello everyone, welcome back to the Action RPG Lessons. In lesson number 9, we'll test our player's brain with a small puzzle. If they manage to figure it out, we'll reward them with a treasure chest. But first, let's take a look at the challenge from the last lesson. If you haven't tried it yet on your own, please do so before continuing on. Your task was to create an evil tree enemy. So first, we needed to add the sprite to it. It uses the evil tree sprite from the asset store, which I've named evil tree. And we wanted to set its scales up to two. So scale X equals two and scale Y equals two. Next, we needed five variables. We needed a direction variable that equals up, a move timer that equals zero, a health variable that equals three, a speed variable that equals one, and an invincibility timer that equals zero. In the loop, we needed to check the direction and then move in that direction by speed. We also wanted a collision with the sword. This code is going to be the same as we did for the bat. You can just select it all and copy it. If you like, you can copy the loot code as well and paste it in the evil trees loop. Next, we wanted to count up the move timer. And if that move timer reaches 100, we'll pick a random number, and based on that number, we'll change the direction of the movement. So we'll say if self.movetimer is greater than or equal to 100. And this code will be actually very similar to the spawner's code when it picks a random direction. The code is going to be the exact same. We're picking a random number between 1 and 4 and changing the direction based on that result. We only need to change the name of the variable in here. So let's go back to the evil trees loop after copying that and paste it in here. You might have to adjust the spacing so make sure you go to each line and move it back. And like I said, we need to change this bat direction to just direction. Now that we've randomized the direction, we need to reset the move timer. This will happen regardless of what the direction number is, so make sure it's not in one of the if statements. We need to say self.movetimer equals zero. Now in order to use these random numbers, we have to remember to import random at the top of the loop. So make sure you have that line. Let's add the evil tree to the forest to see how he works. I'm going to name this evil tree Branchy, and he's going to be an evil tree class. And I'm going to put him down at the bottom of the screen. I'll set his x equal to about 100, just to move him over a little bit, and then his y down to about negative 200. And there he is. After about 100 frames, which is between 1 and 2 seconds, he picks a new random direction to move in. This makes him seem more alive. The last thing we needed to do was give the player a collision with him. This collision is going to be the same as the bat. So if you highlight it and copy and then paste right below, 
The only thing you need to change is what he collides with. And instead of bat, it'll be evil tree. And just like that, if we collide with him, we get that ouch message. Now that our evil tree enemy is complete, let's go ahead and get started on this lesson. The first thing we need to do is create a new room. I'm going to call this a puzzle room. We also need three more classes for today. We need a star. We need a coin. And we need a chest. We need a sprite for four things now. The background for the puzzle room, and those three classes. In the asset store, we have our coin here. We have the BG Forest 2, which we'll use for our puzzle room. I'm going to call it Puzzle BG. We have the star. And we have the treasure chest. Let's go through and set all the sprites and scales for these objects. I recommend highlighting some code from one of the other objects and copying and pasting that in here. The only thing you need to change is which sprite you're using. In this case, I'm using the star. And in this one, I'm using the coin. And in this one, I'm using the treasure. In the puzzle room, we'll add a background. I'm going to call it puzzle, and it's going to be a background class. And the sprite is going to use that puzzle BG. We'll also need to add the star and the coin in our puzzle room. You can place them wherever you like, but make sure they're far apart from each other. I'm going to place the gold star down at the bottom left. So its X is going to be negative 300, and its Y is going to be negative 200. Let's also add the coin, and the coin I'm going to put at the top right corner. So its x is going to be 300, and its y is going to be 200. Let's quickly add the functionality to move from the forest to the puzzle room. First, let's move from the forest to the puzzle room. We want to check if the hero moves over to the right side of the screen. So I'm going to check if his x is greater than 500. And if so, I'm going to set the room to puzzle. I'll also place the hero at the left side of the puzzle room. Now to move back, I'm going to copy this code and repurpose it inside the puzzle loop. So inside the puzzle loop here, I'm going to paste it. And the functionality is still the same. I just want to change field to forest. And now, if I move over to the forest, I end up in the puzzle room. Now I forgot to extend the background for my puzzle room, so I'll do that now. We want to increase the scale X and scale Y. There we are. Perfect. Now since I'll be working inside the puzzle room for today, 
I'm just going to skip a step and go to the game and set room to puzzle right away. That way we don't have to walk every time. There we go. Now that we've got our puzzle room set up, we're going to be coding inside the player object. We want the player to be able to carry the star over to the coin. It's a very simple puzzle, but it's a good one to start off with. Inside the player start, we're going to add a variable to keep track of whether he's carrying an object or not. This is going to be a new type of variable. It's going to be self.carriedObject equals none. What I've created here is an empty variable. It's basically a placeholder for something else. This variable is going to keep track of what carried object we're trying to pick up or move around. In our case, this is going to be the star, but it could be anything you like. Inside the loop is where we'll code the logic for that. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and we're going to check if we have a carried object or not. If so, we'll be moving it around with us. So if we have a carried object, like so, and you might be wondering, wait, what does this mean? What we're checking for here is if carried object is not empty, if it exists. If so, we're going to do something with it. We're going to move it around. And to move it around, well, we just want to match its position to where the player is. And that's easy. We've done that several times already. We want to say self.carriedObject.x equals self.x. And we want to do the same thing with the y. We also want to check if we want to drop the carried object because we don't want to carry it forever. So inside here, we're going to check if we press a button, and if so, we'll drop the carried object. I'm going to check if I pressed the E key. And if so, the easiest way to drop the carried object is to set it back to none, to empty it. So we're not keeping track of that star anymore. It can go on its own way. So how do we pick it up in the first place? Well, first, we need to make sure that we're not already carrying an object. And there's a cool way to do that. This if statement is checking if we are carrying an object. Well, there's a special keyword we can use to check any other condition, such as we're not carrying an object. And that keyword is else. If we're checking to see if we're carrying an object here, here we're checking anything else. And this suits our purposes perfectly. If we're not carrying an object, first let's see if we're close enough to pick up one. We can do so with a collision check. So we want to check if we're colliding with a star. So we do a get collision between self and the star class. If so, we're going to check if we press a button. I'm going to reuse that E key. So that can be our pick up or let go button. If so, we can do a cool trick here. Since carried object can be any type of object, we can also set it equal to that collision information. So if we're colliding with a star, we can immediately set carried object to be that star. We do that by writing self dot carried object equals that collision check. It's going to be a long line. I'll expand this a bit so you can see the whole thing.
So, if we collide with the star, we're going to check if we press a button, and if so, we make carried object equal to that star that we're colliding with. And since carried object now equals something, the star, we go into this if statement and start moving it along with us. And if we press E again, we drop the star and we no longer move it with us. But we can pick it up again. Let's test this out. If I move over to the star, I'm now colliding with it. And if I press E, there we go, it moves along. And if I press E again, I drop it. So the goal of this puzzle was to move the star over to the coin, and if so, we'll spawn our treasure chest. Let's go to the coin's loop and do that collision. We want to see if the coin is colliding with the star. So we say between self and star. And if so, we're going to create the treasure chest. So I'm going to call it a new chest, and it's equal to that chest class. And I think I can leave it at the middle of the screen. There's one thing we want to do though, and that's to make sure the chest only appears once. Right now, we're going to create a new chest every frame, and that's 60 chests per second. That's going to break our game. So in the start, we need to add one boolean to check if the treasure has been spawned yet. So I'll call that treasure spawned, and it's equal to false at the beginning. And in the loop, I'm going to add a line here to check if the treasure has been spawned first. If it hasn't, we will spawn the chest and then tell it that yes, now we've spawned the treasure chest, we don't have to do so anymore. It's true. Let's test it out. If I bring the star over to the coin, I get the treasure chest. Perfect. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be able to interact with the treasure chest to acquire a new piece of equipment. I'll see you there.